Math genius test. That's right. Math genius. I'm going to give you something that is actionable, that you can use immediately after watching this video to test to see if you have any math ability. Now, why is this test valid and why should you care? I think that's an important thing because there's all kinds of tests on the internet, you know, test your IQ, test this. Why is this any different? Well, this is the test that I created and it's based solely on just experience from having hundreds, thousands of students, math students, over the years. And when you have that many students, when you see that many people, when you meet that many people, professors, students, people involved in mathematics for so many years, you kind of know what it takes to be really good at math. And so you know, you know a math genius when you see one. You know, I, I've had some students that are incredibly talented. They are 10x of me. I mean, just pure, raw talent. It's just maybe that talent wasn't harnessed for whatever reason. Maybe they chose not to. There's people who are good at math that choose not to pursue math, right? So keep that in mind. So these are tests that you can apply right away. And let's just get right to it. So the first one, I call it absorption. So it's the absorption test. So if you are in a classroom, in college or in high school, how much of the material do you absorb when you go to class? I'm not talking about going home and studying, reading the book. I'm talking about sitting there, taking notes, writing everything down. How much do you understand on average? This is going to depend entirely on your past experience with mathematics and on what's being presented to you in class and the presentation of the teacher. So the teacher, whether they're good or bad at presenting, is going to affect this also. So it's going to vary from class to class because you're going to have different teachers, right? So it's not just about the math, it's also about the teacher. And it's also about your background, right? Because if you had known X, Y, Z, then maybe you would have understood what the teacher said, right? So there's no one party to say, this is the reason you don't understand, this is the reason you do, because there's many factors. But that number, that percentage, what is your average? So for me, the average has always been 60 to 70%. I would say on average, I understood 60 to 70% of what was taught in the classroom. When I had the best teachers of my life, I understood 80%, 99%, right? When I had the really, really good teachers. So I think that a math genius would be someone who is in that higher range pretty much every time. So if you feel like you can go to class and you're absorbing things pretty quickly, then you have that absorption gift, right? Which I don't think I have. I think, again, 60 to 70% is good for me. And you might say, well, if you went to class now, wouldn't you get it? Yeah, but you know, put me in a computer science class where they're talking about machine learning. I'll probably get 60 to 70 percent. You know, put me in, put me in a class where they're teaching programming. I'll, I'll probably like some something really advanced because I do know some coding, but like, I'll probably get 60 to 70 percent. You know, put me in a hardcore CS class, I'll get 60 to 70 percent. If I work hard, I'll you know, I'll understand it. I'll go home and then you know, I'll figure it out. But that's what, that, that's my initial absorption, right? 60 to 70 percent. I think that people who are gifted, you know, if you have the absorption gift, if you have that. So if you're above, if you're above 60 to 70%, I, I think uh, you have a gift, right? I mean, you, you have something that you should be using, okay? Because I, I think that's really good. Now, I've made a video in the past, by the way, where I talked about this percentage, and it seemed like at the time, a, a lot of people were in the 40 to 50 range, and there was some, there was a lot in the 60, 70, but there were very few in that higher range, okay? So if you're up there, you have, that, you have that, that gift. The second test is the performance test. Can you perform, right? So can you absorb the material? If you have your absorption gift, then, then you can absorb material pretty quickly. The performance test requires hard work. So you know, if you want to be a math genius, you got to put in the work, right? No one's like, you know that movie Good Will Hunting where he just, you know, he's reading his girlfriend's organic chemistry book and teaching her organic chemistry. He's 
solving unsolved problems in Harvard on, on, the, on the chalkboard, goodwill hunting. I, that's not really how it works. Usually people have to work really, really hard. So the second test requires that you work. The test is basically if you can actually take a test and get an A in a math class, right? I mean, you should be able to do that consistently if you're going to be a math genius, right? Or you might get some Bs, you, know, you, might, you, might, you might fail a test sometimes, but for the most part, you're going to get A's, right? And I say, oh, that's hard. It is hard because you have to study. So how do you do that? How do you test yourself? Well, you actually have to study. That's the trick. And so to actually study, what does that mean? Well, it's pretty simple. It's just really hard to execute. You just have to make sure you can do every single homework problem, every example from the notes, everything you've ever seen for that class, right? Every example from the book, everything on your own, cold, with no resources. And if you can do that, you'll get an A on the test. Most people never get there because that takes an incredible amount of work. But it's a good test because if you can get to that point and then you can take the test and get an A, you've passed the performance test. So you can perform, you can do mathematics, you can get an A. That means you can basically get a math degree, right? I mean, that's basically what that means. So that's the second thing. And the last test, I think, is, is, is the biggest one. The last test is the one that everyone strives for. It's the adaptability test. Basically, your ability to pick up a math book and just learn, right? Just start learning. Yes, you might get stuck. It's normal. Yes, you might not know what's going on. But you'll be able to read through it. You'll be able to understand those definitions. And you'll have most of the background necessary. Sometimes there'll be a couple things there that you don't know, but you'll have everything. You know, you'll have topology. You'll have advanced calculus. You'll know linear algebra. You'll know, you'll, you'll know the core subject. You'll know complex variables, right? You know calculus cold. You can prove anything in advanced calculus like that, right? You're a rock star at proofs, and you're able to absorb new material. You can pick up an advanced math book and you can read it. You can pick up a research paper and with, with a lot of work and a couple of nights, you'll grind through some of it, and, I mean, depending on the topic, right? So that ability, that, that adaptability is the ultimate form, I think, of math genius. And it's where you want to be and where you want to get to. How do you get there? You do math a lot for years, for a really long time, right? Most people you have to have a math degree usually. I mean, you can do it through self-study, but you know, think about how long it takes to get a degree, right? It takes years, and you have a teacher, so yeah, it's hard. It's hard. So that's the math genius test. Absorption, performance, and adaptability. I think the absorption one's a really easy test you can do. Again, for me, it's 60 to 70 percent. I have found that the consensus for making videos like this before was a lot of people the 40, 50, a lot of people in the 60, 70. Some people, in the, in the, some people were down below, right? Very, but not, it was the minority. And very few people were in the 80, 90% range, right? Very few people, right? Very few people. That's a gift. If you can understand what people are saying to you when they're teaching you math, you have a gift, my friend. You have a gift. Use it. Use it. You know, use what you have. Because, again, 60 to 70%, that doesn't sound very good, right? Doesn't sound very good. And getting an A. It helps, right? Try the performance test. It, it will help you get an A at the very least. And of course, that last test is like the nirvana of mathematics, right? You pick up a math book and sit down with a candle and a cup of tea and you know, a pencil. I have a pencil right here and start working on some mathematics. And even if you've never seen it, you know, if you've never seen functional analysis, who cares? You've already seen all the other subjects. You, you can jump in and you can grind through it. Anyways. What do you think? What do you think about the test? Are there other, other things you think I should be adding to this test to make this test better? Do you have other ways of testing math genius? I'm curious. If you do, leave a comment in the comment section below. Also, if you want to learn math, check out my courses. They're on Udemy, but if you get them, please use my links. They are in the description of this video. As always, keep doing mathematics.